It gives me great pleasure to bring our next book launcher to the microphone. He comes and he's brought along his wonderful new books. This man is amazing. His books are gorgeous. And uh, I'm waiting in trepidation for the artsy one that's going to be mailed to me. But he, I, which one, what's that one that you're holding? Well, I'm holding both. Actually. Both? Okay. Bob McKenzie, all the way from Kingston, please give a warm welcome to a very talented. you I'm not going to do a lot of explaining because I do have two books in the time given for one uh, so I'm going to do four and a half minutes of poetry from each book and brief explanation and then if you want more explanation we can talk after so firstly I'm going to read from song rise brief explanation this is an art book that I made in 1995 which is uh, bound at the top and opens this way and we've done a new edition with additional poems in it. Uh, the poems are pieces that were originally performed by the group Poem to Care of my work with music. Uh, so I tried to replicate that as close as I could by doing this book, which doesn't open from the top, but looks like it does. So. Um, so I'll read from this first. <coughs> the Silken Wind. Sliding down the sun like a sky-hung hawk in flight, I will follow you through this timeless space and ride the silken wind for you. Like a clipper ship on an endless sea of love, I will sail beyond all the worlds I know and ride the silken wind for you. Like a drifting leaf seeking some new home and fall, I will turn and turn, though the fires may flare, and ride the silken wind for you. And by you obsessed, I will fly and sail and drift, and will drown for you, and will burn for you, and ride the wind for you. Hands. You open the door and let lamps with your eyes, what fire your eyes could rear. And your hands, like a gardener planting a rose, wandered over me, pleasing me, rearing wild rose, and I built up my house with your mind. When we closed the door and we lowered the lights, in dusk our eyes would meet, and your hands, like a gardener raising the flame, wandered over me, making me wildflower tame, and you ate with the host of my mind. Now I've closed the door and I've shut off the lights, but still your eyes are here, and your hands, like a gardener plucking a rose, wander over me, teasing me, lighting old glows, though I've emptied the house of your mind. And your hands, like a gardener casting a seed, wandered over me, teasing me, lighting the rose, but I've weeded the house of your mind. The world is turning, but into what? What are we becoming? What have we wrought? I've been out in the jungle and on the city street. I've been out on the edge where the earth and sky meet. I've sometimes been political and sometimes been correct. And I've seen whole worlds destroyed by hatred and neglect. The world it is turning, but into what? What are we becoming? What have we wrought? The change is inside us all around too. Nothing can stop it except me and you. I've been beaten by the man and I've been at the top. I've been the latest martyr and been a PC cop. The revolution's carried me along a bitter path. My comrade's gone before me to face a bloody wrath. Come, join the party, baby. See lights shine in the sky. Honor all conformity and may you never die. You cannot be alternative or different than the rest. You cannot start a commune and hide out in the West. The world, it is turning, but into what? What are we becoming? What have we wrought? The change is inside us, all around too. Nothing can stop it except me and you. I've loved you as a woman and held you close to me. Thought you were my lover when you thought you were free. 
I've been across the desert sand, seen anarchy and chaos. I've seen my world destroyed by all your betrayals. The change is inside us all around too. Nothing can stop it except me and you. That's a dandelion song. You and I were friends once, singing wide-eyed love songs, loving too for oneness, you and I in our dance. Clouds were painted fluffball lion's manes and breezes, drifting parachutists breaking up old friendships. Rain today recalls you, storm so long ago now. Where are your eyes, love, wide as the clouds are melting? And also, this is the last one from this book. There is a rustle in your name like the passing of the years, the sound of days falling like leaves around you, inevitably to leave a barren scarecrow in the wind without a rustle. There's already a look of scarecrow in your eyes, a certain hollow in your face and hunger in your mane that can only grow like chaos inward upon itself. There is a beauty about you, but it is the derelict fantasy of a long, vacant mansion, or the prairie in November, rather than that of youth in search of life. There is a rustle that follows you as you move, carrying autumn from room to room and filling every room with leaves until, one day, you shall have shed so much of yourself that none shall be left for the present. This is Spirit Quest. It's a very expensive book. I'll let you know that now. Uh, it, it's because of the artwork reproduction. It costs a lot to make it the quality we wanted. This is a collaborative work between me and an artist named Charlena Wood. My poems, her paintings and drawings. And uh, it, it's, her work is quite lovely. Um, and it, it's all about mountains. Our western mountains in specific. Flying. I think of David on the verge of a ledge a mile or more above the green valley below. I think of David fallen from the rock face, a broken winged bird helpless on that ledge. I think of David out beyond the edge, pushed perhaps by Earl or someone very much like him. I think of David high on mountain air, a bird in flight soaring ever down. I think of Daedalus at the edge of the sky, reaching for the sun, and Icarus far above. Fire one, the end. The spark can be anything. Campfire coals left but not dead, casually tossed cigarette. Lightning touches dry forest, a seed laying among the leaves, a spark becomes a flower, colors dance across the ridge, do see -si do the mountain wide. Not rain, but ash, this dark cloud, this friendly, friend, frenzied dance beneath it, crackling, snapping, exploding. Run, run! The living flee death, painting the forest hot hues. The spark can be anything, living, growing, rampaging, in the end, unstoppable fire. Fire three. Awakening. Drawn in gray and black charcoal, the landscape I remember has changed since we came last spring. Even from the car, I see green tendrils climb from the ash, stretch toward the new spring sun. There are birds in the shadows making song and making nests high in the scorched black pine masts. On the ground, shadows take life. Rabbits and squirrels scurry, and deer stand in the clearing. And there, I think just maybe, just maybe I see a bear in this scene I remember, drawn in gray and black charcoal. Bears. Bears in Banff walk the main street, hold lunch meetings at the dump, wave and smile as we drive past, invite us to stop for lunch. Bears gather around thrown food, tourists toss from car windows, my dad catching it on film out his part open window. Paws push the car window down, my dad rolls the window up, man against bear like some myth. We watch in mixed awe and fear. 
Returning to Tujac Lake, we find the tent slashed by claws, food inside taken by bears, feel the chill of mountain air. Tourists come here to meet bears. Brown bears so cute in daylight, at night fear bears in the dark approaching their lamp-lit tents. Bears are in the camp at dusk, stalk between tent and washrooms, watch campers creep out in fear, make shadow art with their paws. <laughs> Spirit guide, second last. The cabin was off to the side of the big house, where the lake could be heard lapping at the dock. The cabin and the big house are both log buildings, reminders of my grandparents' homestead originals. This was the still untamed Wild West caribou country, cattle ranches and lumberjacks and wild things in the woods. The five of us stayed in the cabin when we came north, my mom and dad and my sisters, and of course me as well. I forget why that day I had stepped outside the cabin, turned from the lake to walk past some bush on the road. I saw his eyes and stopped by that wood where he watched, eyes like human eyes and hypnotic enough to hold me there. We stood silent without moving for an eternal moment, as though we spoke without words and understood perfectly. There was something perfect and complete connecting us, an unbreakable mystic union between his spirit and mine. As sudden, he turned quiet and disappeared into the morning mist. Echoes of this bobcat lingered as I stood silent by that wood. And no visible means. Sheep spot the wall like braille. Don't cling, but stand in peace. Defy all gravity. Enjoy the view below. We park by the highway. I watch from the shoulder. My dad takes pictures. Silence wraps us in awe. This space overtakes me as no book ever can. Here the gods can be felt, and I felt very small. So, um, I do have this book here, and it's 15, but I'll, I'll sell it to you for 10, or if you want to pay the full price, I'll give you a CD with it. Um, and this one, I'm willing to take orders. It's, it's actually on special right now for $45 and $5 shipping in Canada. It's very expensive, I told you. Um, but I don't have it because the shipment didn't come in, so I, I have to take orders. Um, so those are available if you want. And thank you very much. <laughs>